Someone asked the question, why did I write my book called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood? Well, first of all, in Matthew 24, verse 37, Jesus says, the things which were happening in the world before the flood would be replicated in the days before his return. So I wanted to know what was happening in the world in the days preceding the flood. So I dove into the Old Testament, and not only did I dive into the Old Testament, but I really poured over ancient documents written by Jewish leaders, early church fathers, all kinds of historians and scholars to see what we can find about giants and monsters and fallen angels who came to copulate with women who then gave birth to the Nephilim. And I found out there was a lot of information, full documentation of these events, which means it's not a legend, it's not a myth. These were really events which occurred before the flood, and I was quite shocked at what I uncovered. As I was studying this subject, I felt like I needed to put it into a manuscript because many people want to know about these things. And not only that, my team and I traveled to the mountains of Ararat. Now in Genesis chapter eight, verse four, the Bible tells us that the ark came to rest in the mountains of Ararat. Never says on Mount Ararat. It says in the mountains of Ararat and the Ararat mountain range is quite large. And among them is a lower mountain called Mount Judy. And today lying on the slopes of that mountain is a ship-shaped object that is 515 feet long, exactly the same dimensions given to us in Genesis chapter six. And we know because of ground penetrating radar and all kinds of scans, it is a man-made object which contains compartments, rooms, three levels or three decks, a central corridor. And my friends, I'm fully convinced it really is the ruins of Noah's Ark. I've been there, I've been all over it, and I wanted to document it and photograph it, and I put all of that in this amazing book. And I believe that if we look back in history to see what was happening in the days before the flood, and if Jesus really said those events would be replicated at the end of the age, we're not just studying the past, we're learning what's going to happen between now and the time that Jesus comes. It's a peak into the future. And much of what happened in the world before the flood is already beginning to transpire. And according to the words of Jesus, it's just going to get more and more bizarre in society as we come closer to the coming of Jesus. Of course, God never gives us prophecy to scare us. God tells us things to prepare us and we need to be prepared. If we understand what the Bible says and we understand what Jesus prophesied, then we will be spiritually and mentally prepared for what we're going to deal with between now and the coming of Jesus. And that is why I wrote this book. And I have to tell you, I've written a lot of books. This is the funnest book I have ever written. It just thrilled me. Every page to write was just almost enrapturing just to put on paper what I had unearthed from the annals of history from biblical documents, extra biblical documents that are very reliable, many of them quoted by the New Testament, and put it all together in this new book called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. And it just opens up secrets from the past and prophecies about the future. And that, my friend, is why I wrote this book, and I want you to have it.